Um, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, we had a request for an appointment to the Historical Society. It was in, it seemed like there was something else. So are you going to bring up anything? Yes. Um, how do you say that? I think there were a couple of things, but I can't remember now. Yeah. Seems like there was something else in addition to the Historical Society appointment, but I can't for the life of me remember. And I have an excuse, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you folks would like to have a have a really nice cold for the holidays, I could drop down by. I had one last week. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Well. Let's make sure that we've got a couple budget related things, but I think we can fall into that. Uh, okay. The other thing, the only thing that, I, that comes to mind immediately is talking about articles, but that will be in January, not in, not now. Um, so I think that's going to be good for now. We'll go ahead and jump right in, shall we? Right so I'll start with one. That uh, going back to the things you've already covered. This is kind of an important one. Um, and Rosemary, I sent an email to you and to bring in and Rosemary about the, the tax number for our FY23 estimated final. I believe that number should be. You mean the amount to be raised by taxes? The amount to be raised by taxes. The very first, the very first line. Yeah. Well, current taxes, basically. Yeah. Um, so under the FY, I believe the number should be four million twenty-four thousand one twenty thirty, which is the amount that we actually set the tax rate based on. So two million two. Hundred and no, two million twenty four thousand one twenty thirty. So two zero two four. What's it? What it is? Uh, that is that is. I'm sorry, Doug. I did make the change. Oh, you did make the change. Okay. I did not have a chance to ask Rosemary if that was okay. the correct amount. Uh, right. So if he's already done that, then that you has fiscal year twenty three. Yes, estimated year. What that reflects is uh, it reflects the 40,000 that was raised by article plus the exemptions, right, Rosemary? Yes. Um, and okay. somewhere I've got the uh, I've got the sheet that we used when we worked on that, but I can't seem to find it at the moment. It's okay. It sounds like it's corrected in the file anyway. So I'll yeah. copy for tonight. Yeah, Brian can double check it with Rosemary, but um, I've believe that's a good number. And, that's what I'm saying. The same trade yes. Saying. Yes, it is. Okay. And, okay. and I didn't know that it was. I, mean, okay. I, I didn't know that he had made that change. Well, okay, sounds good. And Rosemary, there's no danger in setting that number to that way that it's not going to mess with if we don't collect all of the taxes. This is bill not collected. Right. Okay, good. Okay. So um, there was one thing that we got an email about that we circled back to, which is the beautification city. Um, um, I think it's kind of a slot for things. We have yeah, no some committees are broken out, some are. That's just not. one line in the budget. Yeah. yeah. Beautification. It is on 164. 164. Yeah. 164. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That is at 3,000. Uh, when we go to cover the minutes, I believe that that part of the discussion when that came up was, I think we're actually talking about tree board. I remember it being the tree board too. Oh, um, I was surprised. 
Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I know it's the next one. Did I get something wrong in the middle? Did I say unification when we were talking about three boards? We think so, yes. But we should just confirm the numbers because the unification, it talks about the unification having $2,787, but that was actually the thing. That's the that was one. That was a good word. That was a good word. So did I, did I say unification by the state? Yes. Um, we'll forgive you. <laughs> okay, thanks, Donna. Uh, so we'll, we'll circle back to that in a minute. Um, okay. So that currently is in there for three thousand. Yep. So it's yep. Is there anything else that we had to follow up on? There's a few things that we need to that I still need to follow up on. Um, I spent most of my energy on highway and the reserve fund over the last since Tuesday. So. Fair jump right in then let's skip yeah. over those yeah. all right so uh if i can actually direct you to the reserve fund first mm -hmm. um you've got two pages for the reserve fund and i'm sorry for the that this is just going to be a little bit confusing um the one i want to look at just to print Got the same page. Yeah, I think we've got two copies of the same one. So the reserve fund, I reorganized this a little bit based on some suggestions. So I think it becomes a little bit more readable. Um, and we have a couple suggested changes to the reserve fund outlook. Um, and that would be in particular, um, eliminating the mower for the Kubota that we don't need to replace that at this time. We might do that at some point in the future. Uh, same with the compressor and the screener. So line 35, 36, and 37 can be, uh, we think can be eliminated for the time being. Fiscal year and uh, well, that would be out into the future as well. Yeah, this goes in the future, but with the cell that's F35 includes the mower, so that should be struck. Right. For 85, for 8,300? Yes. And this. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. We're jumping. Clearly, you guys have already talked about this. We're jumping all over. So you're saying that. Basically, cells thirty uh, e thirty four through who knows how many columns or um, through row twenty by uh, thirty seven just get zeroed out. Yes, they don't get pushed out. No. Okay. <clears throat> more more for the Kubota. That doesn't make sense that we don't replace that at um, some point in time. Back uh quite a bit earlier this summer, slide four that said that I could work on Jason and Brian on uh proposed changes. Now there there was three copies that I sent, and one was just some reworking, need some reworking, and then another one was where I met with Jason and we went over. Um, you know, the compressor, for instance, but there is a backup one in the other shed and it's not used nearly as much as it used to be used because of the increase in battery tools that's used down there. Another discussion we had was the mower because we were purchasing replacement parts that don't really exist, uh, but there was a suggestion and discussion around how because the dishes are different now than they used to be, but that mower isn't actually adequate for the job. And we might be better off renting a boom mower, continuing that. But if we were renting a boom mower as the game plan, we wouldn't replace them all. And then the read screen the whole another conversation. But um, this is kind of multiple proposed changes in one. Maybe we should just print all three. Can we just talk about one at a time and put a certain at a time? Jason has some input here, I'm sure. 
Can we talk about the mowers? Yeah, the conversation that uh, Evan's talking about, we did mention all that about the boom more, but we also mentioned purchasing it. Um, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we had discussed it, and it's in a different path. Um, yeah, okay. which is just a I'm trying to add to it, but it's cheaper. Um, no, a, a straight brush hog that goes straight off the back, not one that, yeah, for a moment, uh, like the uh, Hogan 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 And that mower was on a, I don't remember, a six year rotation, I believe. And I talked to Steve the other day. He said you were involved, Duncan. And that mower is probably 10 to 12 years old. So it's done very well. Generally placed in. So it's probably gone to, through two cycles. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But this sheet that's in front of the select board right now, um, because we had worked through some different scenarios, this is kind of a melding too, because it has, or maybe I'm wrong here. But this one, this is the one that has the backhoe pushed out another five years. If there was discussion about an excavator, but the excavator is showing. So it's correct. The we end of 2031 is still an accurate number as far as everything goes, but. Year end balances would shift. And Jason, you said you've got the an estimate for the excavator. I've got two quotes back. I'm sorry, I was talking to Evan. There was a time that one talked about before we put out the quotes before I get the other one back. It's not unfair for the other containers. Sure. Can you give me a ballpark number, like 200, 250? I can. For the whole, because there was two scenarios quoted. There was the excavator uh, ditching bucket and the thumb, and then there was excavator ditching bucket, thumb, and mower. So this is from Tuesday. This email that you're referring to is from Tuesday in October. Sorry, yeah, Tuesday in October, uh, October 11th, specifically. Um, and you worked through it. So there are three options here. I don't, we did talk about them in our following meeting. I know we talked about it. Um, but to your point, I don't know that we landed on anything. And it looks like, Brian, you've already pushed back the screen and the backhoe because it's not the same on the electronic version as the print. Yeah. No, it's not. The screen is removed from this copy. The backhoe, oh, no. Well, then it's the one, two below. It's just the backhoe. The backhoe. Is pushed back. The loader is loader is unchanged. That's correct. The sheet that you sent us has the back. It does. Back really can't be pushed off unless <laughs> there was three different scenarios that were just put together and select board had discussed potentially a back hole. Nobody had decided uh yay or nay, and there wasn't a bolt, it was just presenting potential. I had you know. But the discussion was that there was a backhoe or if there was an excavator, there would be much less need for a backhoe. So that would be pushed down the line. And when I made the change, I just pushed it five years. I can't make any decisions to present the select board. Yeah, I'm probably not going to make those detailed decision decisions to make. Um, but you don't have a you don't have a bolt in the back hole for the excavator that you have to stop. I think you talk about whether you even want to talk about the excavator. I think um, we had talked before about that and said that we yeah. should get bolts, but there was no decision deciding back there. The back hole. Is that still a cost shared item between the town and village? It is. 80 20? Yep. 70 30? 80 20. There, there hasn't been any change to it. So these, this figure reflects the town only portion of that or the whole of it? For the backhoe, it reflects just the town's portion. And, and that's the sheet that you sent? Yes. 
via email. What was the other sheet you were now I was going to leave in the other items and be unchanged. Um, so okay. the... The decision that we need from the board or that I need from the board tonight is not even a final decision about making replacements on those three items, the mower, the compressor, and the screener, um, and the backhoe, but are we okay pushing them out further? We can decide in the future if we want to not replace them at all, but if we can decide that we're not replacing them this year, uh, this coming year, then we can we can move forward. Uh, the fund is healthy either way uh, and can afford afford the replacements or not, but we don't think that they're necessary at this time. How many hours is the backhoe cut on it, Jason? 2,800 and change. And are you guys at one point were keeping a log between town village juice. Is that is that roughly eight one do you think? Or one is probably ninety-five five for the last three years. They don't use it much. The village doesn't use it much. Once in a while they do some of the small problems. And have, has the village been consulted about the possibility of replacing the backhoe? I wanted to take the board's temperature before I raised that with the village. I had stepped it with the the us looking into this and we originally talked about this. I want to go on record saying this is all always changed to brought up so we can aside enough money to buy necessary to put it back. Also, because previous changes, um, the fund was getting extremely low. Was it in 25 or 26? Uh, we pretty well took care of the 25, 26. That was a, a low point for us. That was very low. And I, is this the exact number for the greater? Yes, that's pretty accurate. Uh, we don't. I don't. Know, I don't have a schedule for that. Have we actually signed the note for we have not. Yeah. So it's. Well, we but know. we know what the cost. Was. Yeah, it, it is accurate to the cost, but it's not the the actual note. And at this rate, we may not get it. This. Uh, well, the first payment will still be due. Yeah. Um, we can have the payment due one up, whatever. What's that? We can have the payment due one up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I know that just when we joined the board last year, there was a pretty strong, we should have this rotating cycle of getting heavy equipment in and out. Um and based on the adjustments here, I'm okay with, I, like I said back in October, I know I remember saying this, I'm okay with pushing these things out. I just don't want to push them out so that everything needs to happen all at once later. Um, and I'm actually curious to, I'd be curious to know if we rented everything that we rent, everything that we use for heavy equipment that we don't need to replace or we don't use more than two months a year with the difference between rental and buying actually costs us uh, or whatever, you know, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'm still curious, like, is it really worth us owning all of these things? I think once we've got a few more estimates, once we've got a few estimates in on, on the excavator, we can actually, we can provide that. Uh, so I, got, I got two in and I know me and Brian know the monthly rental rate is the last year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In, in your comment, are you referring to backhoe two or just the extra? I'm talking all heavy equipment. I don't care what the heavy equipment is. Like, of all of the heavy equipment is heavy, right? It costs us a lot. Is the return on investment worth it? 
uh, we could be better off financially. Maybe it is worth it when we sell it later for a lot of money. I don't know, but is the return on investment worth it? But you're talking about only stuff that's used for two months a year or less, right? No, I'm talking about all heavy equipment. I don't care what it is. Well, you did that. The dump trucks would be considered heavy equipment. Are you you're including that in the? I would, but I would just say our return on investment is high because we use them all the time. So probably not worth talking about. Maybe it is. I don't know. I, I think there's several pieces that would be worth that discussion. Uh, and yeah. I think anything we spend over $10,000 is worth that discussion. Yep. I'm fine with moving the mower or TVG into a regular brush hog and removing the professor and removing the screen. In the back of the conversation goes with the excavator to make it solve. So I'm going to move the backhoe back up for the time being. Back up to what? Next year. Yep, yeah, it'll be replaced in FY24 if we stay on schedule. So I'm going to move the backhoe back up. I'm going to keep, I'm going to remove the mower, compressor, and the screener. For the time being. Yeah, for the time being. The mower. What sorry, but was the backhoe? That was what the back that wasn't what the backhoe was at in our last in the first sheet we've seen. So is that where the backhoe was before October? Backhoe would actually be purchased in this current year. And if you once five years. Oh. Well, in the sheet that Brian sent out, he's got yeah, gap back on me. 23, right? All I know is that it's in that sheet as part of the total uh, indebtedness, or part as part of the total uh, cost that's going to the line item for interest and revenue in from the restricted fund into the highway budget. Unless I, am I wrong on that, right? No, you are correct. Though. In the original budget, the backhoe had, was in fiscal year 24, $13,000 of it was in fiscal year 24. In the original budget. Yes. And you don't see that there. It's not in the, it's not in the version you have in your email, Duncan. This is from back earlier in the year. Well, it says cat yeah. backhoe 13614. Yeah. Or uh, well, 23, 24. I don't know what version you're looking at, but yeah, right around 13, yes. It's over 13. So if we put that in the, if we're, if we, if we bring that back to where it was before, then we're, committing essentially to the capital budget to buying that this year, which I'm not sure if any conversations we want to do. We can have a little bit more conversation about it. Or tonight, yes, but. we would be proposing bringing it in the budget. But if we have more conversation, then we're going to make it possible. Or we can decide not this year. No, yeah, we could. Realistically, if we think about where we are in our budget right now, like in terms of timing before we need to publish in the town report, we have hopefully two, maybe three more meetings. If we have a special meeting, we don't even have that many. We have one more meeting unless we have special meetings. So, before the town report has to be. Yeah, probably two meetings. That's usually has to go to has to be at the printer February first. February first, that's the case. Mid January. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be that big a deal to slide the backhoe one year on the schedule, would it? And then we don't have to. I mean, it'll give us a whole year to talk about whether we want to replace the backhoe or buy an excavator. 
I would like the time to actually work through that personally. All right. So I'm going to summarize again. Uh, I'm going, I'm putting the mower, the compressor, and the screener off indefinitely for right now. Then with the backhoe, I'm moving that out to 20 to FY25. So I'm moving that one year further into the future. Jason? Some of you guys are making mine up. They don't mind up for what? <clears throat> pushing the back off. So you don't want us to push the back off? I, I think I was not let down the road of what was happening, I guess. A little left in the diaries. The conversation with me and you had, you know, it's not. Uh -huh. You and I had a conversation about going over the budget, and then one of the we were both changes I made. I had the line item for next to me, or with the select board wanted to choose that. I can't make the decision. I understand. But when, you, when you and me talk, none of this was supposed to be pushed off unless we allocated the money towards the excavator. Yeah, yeah, that's where the. So that's where the weird thing is with the back goal for me. Because it would definitely be pushed off if we went with an excavator in my mind. If we didn't, we might want to talk about replacing it on Jason, I'm Jason, what's the deal with the what's the deal with the equipment you have right now? Do we need the backhoe this year? If we don't do an excavator, if we use the back as much as we have the last year and a half, we will get us we put 1500 hours on almost in the last fifth over the year. Just did you and did you part on the back home? Mainly, they're the Swiss Army knife, they're not made to ditch non stop wood. <laughs> we ditched a lot with it this year, mm -hmm. we grease it, but they're just not made for the constant ditching. And next year we have one more stretch of roads similar to this year, right? There's one more, if I remember correctly. We have another really big reaching effort, and then we'll be in good shape for maintaining it too, if I remember. No, we only got we've done all of the French and Collins and Maple, but we still have an overhill time, but we still have all oh, okay. I don't understand. Okay, I gotcha. So it sounds like we shouldn't push the map the map all out. Point. Unless we rent an excavator for a longer period of time than we have in the past, which we don't currently have in the budget. Yeah, an excavator rental for a month is fifty six hundred bucks, mm -hmm. not counting moving. Mm -hmm. If you rent it for three months, like we did the year before, it puts it up to around sixteen thousand, not including moving. It's about 150 to 200 dollars to have it moved from site to site. Because we don't have a trailer. Yeah. And then uh, to, to at least to own a backhoe or an excavator, it's uh 19 to 23,000, depending on if you go with the mower or not. A year for seven years, then it's our it's at least all the call. It's a dollar buy out at the end of seven years. So without a bar, it's a three thousand dollar difference annually. And then with the mower on the excavator, that whole proposal that I was going to make was this way: we would take a thousand dollars in the boom mower every year, rent the tractor, we wouldn't have to run the tractor anymore. We have to do it all year long. Okay. But we don't have any money, and I mean, if we if we leased or bought a back home. At least purchase the backhoe. I mean, excavator. We'd need to figure in the cost of a trailer too. One hundred and fifty to hundred dollars for now to have it move. We don't. I mean, it moves on a job and it stays on that road. You know, it just tracks down the road as it's ditching. So we don't lose the lot, except for the grant projects. When we do, they have to go around town. Like we do two or three when we go to the different sites, but. <clears throat> I have another totally unrelated question. Do 
do any of these sheets factor in the 20,000 to the capital reserve fund from last year's money? I wasn't seeing it, but yeah. Because of that reserve fund appropriation is supposed to just go up by 7,000 a year. I guess it's not a separate fine item. I think it was an argument that it should be in that. Well, the 20,000 was separate from what was in the line item. But the, I don't believe that it, it was. I think it's in the line item because it should have been. Hundred and forty-five thousand better than one hundred and fifty-seven. Hundred forty-four thousand. You know, in the annual appropriation line. Yeah, it was one hundred and thirty thousand the year before. And then last year it was 157000 So that was an increase of $7,000 and uh, 20000 on top of that. Oh, well, should we not be at 151 this year? We should get 141. It just goes up $7,000 every year, right? So last year was supposed to be an appropriation of 137. <laughs> The word about seven thousand for this year. Three ninety seven. Huh? Right, three ninety seven. Oh, it's in these days. It's me. Yeah, no, that's not it. If I put in capital and search in the spreadsheet, we have equipment and purchase equip, uh, equip, equipment. Sorry, I can't talk. Three ninety. Capital building capital expense, Holcomb building capital expense. Capital equipment, building capital expense, site capital improvements, capital purchases. It's, um, under, it's 398. Construction projects, 398. Purchase large equipment and capital equipment reserve fund. It's the capital equipment reserve fund. Right. But last, so I guess I'm more confused on this year's appropriation. Than last year. But is your last year's appropriation question answered? Okay. I'm totally confused now. Now that I'm looking at, I'm actually looking at the what was in the town report okay. for the capital capital budget. This should be called capital equipment or reserve fund. What page are you on? Uh, Thirty-three. Oh, this is the actual reserve fund growth plan. Yeah, so last year, the normal appropriation was at 137000 The approved project had an extra 9000 in there. That's why there's 157 on this. What about the year before? It's also in at 157 And that was... That's I don't Nobody think that's here was on the board that year. No board members were real grand, but I don't know yet. I think that should be 130 looking at the budget that we in FY22. We did not pay that much. We paid 130. So that number that's on this sheet should be changed back yes. to back to 130. Although didn't I guess we'd have to go back, go back through the budgets and see what was appropriated and see if there was anything appropriated in the, in the surplus funds or reserved in the surplus funds, just to make sure. Late in the previous year, there was no town meeting. But there was still, the, the town must have reserved out funds. Yeah, must have. Yeah, Jason, when you were talking about the excavator cost, annual cost, the 19 to 23, how many years is that for? Seven. 
but that's not a loan. I asked that because if we applied the 2300 so that we'd excavate it with a mower on it, if we applied that annually beginning this upcoming fiscal year, this year 24, applied that for seven years, took out the 13,000 for the loader, for the backhoe, sorry. Um, that would basically put our lowest year. Is that taking out the six thousand for the more? So we wouldn't need it for that more. Uh, that's different. That's not count. I don't believe. I don't right. Let me just finish my thought, please. And so, if we did something like that, our lowest balance for the year would be. Uh, fiscal year 28 at 30,000 in our reserve. I don't know if you can use this reserve for that spent specific. When I see it, I will not paying off a loan. And the town can't take a loan for more than five years without a loan for a bond vote, correct me if I'm wrong. You're right, but if it's lease purchase, I believe that is exempt from, it's not considered a loan. Right, but can we use a capital of a fund for a non-loan expense? No, no, it's capital. Yeah, I'm, that's a good point. This one's very specific, though. What do you think? Multiple zero fund. You buy pickup trucks out of it. We don't finance those. Fair enough. Yeah, so I mean, small it, equipment we buy. You know, buy it out, right? So purchase now, right? Mm. All right. I don't think the I don't think the wording of the article itself is specific about. I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've got that wording somewhere, right? In the, uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't appear to. So, if we did get an excavator, if we did budget for one, forget whether we get it or not. Let's say, well, let's say we get it for my hypothetical. We wouldn't need a loader for anything. Like, we wouldn't need something smaller. Uh, you need a backhoe. Sorry, a backhoe. Yes. That's why we're pushing it out for. So you would still need a backhoe. The backhoe is really any tool, and it's I guess without knowing where the village stands with it because it is a yeah. Don't forget them, just us. But we need one. It's great for like a, at night you get called in because of a fever, spot or call or something. You can't get the escalator across town in thirty minutes. The the backhoe is on wheels instead of tracks, so it's. Significantly more mobile than the excavator would be. Okay. Uh, we did try out a wheeled excavator last year, uh, and it wasn't a good fit. Okay. I think we need more discussion about. Yeah. Yep. So we can circle so back on that one. In, for the sake of this discussion, though, know, I feel like we should budget. Back out. Okay. That was the original schedule. Let's just stick with it. This is a really problem where you the changes down at the end of January. All right. You good with that? Uh, it's happened if we want to stick together. If we're not going to buy it, um, I don't think we should have it in there, but. If we're going to have the discussion, we can always change the capital plan. Yeah. We'll plan on having a little another pass at, at this. What do we need to get? So we have 20 minutes. Um, and are there more things we need to talk about in the capital plan? No, I'm good with the capital plan. Yeah. Okay, else? So the number that you've got in the line item for the highway reserve fund is 
165026 73. What, what line are you looking at, Duncan? Well, I'm, I'm actually looking at the capital budget that you handed out, and yep. that has purchased large equipment capital. Um, and then it's got um, revenue in from the highway restricted fund of 165026. I apologize again that I wasn't able to correctly print the unmodified version, but the version that went into the budget is the unmodified version. That doesn't answer my question. What's the number? I, I can look at it, I guess, on the, on the budget. Because it should be it should be in this sheet, right? What what line do you remember what line number it was, Kevin? Three, three oh, you're talking about the appropriation. It is three ninety-seven, I think is the, the one you're asking for, Duncan. <laughs> Three ninety seven at the expense, three ninety eight six. Right. So it's one eighty four nine eighty. And that doesn't even match either of these. I think we're going to take a look at it again. Oh, it does. You know, eighty four nine eighty. It should match the one in your email. It does match the one in your email. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about our budget. Yeah. Operating budget. Good. Unless there's anything else we need to cover on that uh, capital. No, Mark, you good? Okay. You sleep. No, Okay. Operating. All right. We have. Uh, you know, the, the benefits and everything that block, those are our estimates still, but they are, uh, as accurate as they can be at this point, um, which sees a pretty significant savings on insurance. If there are no questions there, the next block, the capital and grounds expenses. Uh, you were gonna, didn't we discuss B? Yep. And you just verified that number? Well, you said it uh, that's actually not the same number that we had printed. It, this is the accurate number uh, with an estimated 5,450 gallons at $4.50. So it was very close to what the estimate was, but this is a little bit more accurate. The next block is summer road. 75% over budget. Ooh. Excuse me. Okay, next. Uh, the next block is summer roads. Um, we made a little change to this after kind of based on our discussion. Uh, we Jason and I increased line 370 construction projects annual and uh, made a, a corresponding decrease to motivate. So hold on. Okay. So you corrected it where? We increased construction projects annual. Increased it for fiscal year 23 or 24? For 24. 24. Okay. And decreased mud abatement by a similar oh. amount. And that was based on the prior discussion that we wanted to have more of the repair work related to mud season happening under the uh, construction projects annual instead of mud abatement. But the mud abatement for 2024 is 
Uh, Still at 15,000. It is. It was. It was. Oh, okay. They decreased that okay. to 15 and added 25. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. More accurate. I recognize the budget. I do have a question about um, three brush removal and mulling. Only because we had talked about it maybe in July or August about potentially getting bolts and seeing if we could budget. For having a company come in and mold the inside earlier in the summer before stuff went to seed. If the board's not interested in that, we keep moving. No, I think we should. I think we should try to get your other thing because the sheets are. So, do you want somebody to get bolts or discuss it over the meeting? Um, well, we don't have them. We can make estimates. I don't want to be a man, something like that personally. I can tell you what it used to be. Uh, her Earl Barge used to do the roofs. I know one of the other ones I know about right now. I haven't looked into it, but uh, he was $8,100 an hour. And he can make $8,000 budget, I believe, is what it was in Brian. A while ago, yeah. Is there a potential that the board wanted? The target problem areas. <laughs> Instead of doing the whole two on, you have an hourly budget and a rough estimate between the two you got to come back with, or maybe the whole town. You can talk from there. Is this just one additional mowing cycle? It would, well, it's up to the board. Uh, I think I, an additional mowing cycle early on in the year before everything goes to seed would be good. Help reduce. I understand you're just saying one cycle, not two. That was the other thing. Yeah, well, we already do one, so I was saying one in addition for the two. So you're saying double, double the amount of mower. I'd like to know what it would cost, and if we didn't do it, we can't do it. Uh, we we increased this to six thousand dollars a couple of years ago. Um, this gets a and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but I believe that we get a light pass on kind of everything and a concentrate concentrate on a couple areas. For the, uh, for the tree and brush removal. Tree and brush removal. The last two years, we were uh, focused on an area beyond rotation. As long as you do that kind of mowing, you don't have to come back to it. Depending on speed, three to five years, that's not happening. Are we doing are we doing roadside mowing with our own crew and staff and equipment? We did because the one we used to use got into a scheduling thing where he would never come in until late, late fall. So it made it hard. Uh, then we just started doing it ourselves, renting the tractor. But so that lot, that one of the budget is for equipment rental or? The, the, the one I believe that we're talking about, then there's the invasive species one that we've been applying some of that. Well, I'm the same number of Yes. Or we can apply it. I don't think we actually have been. Is it my understanding that the rail trail is being took over from year going forward? Because I've heard bits and pieces. I'm not sure. I didn't know that was the other three of 32 hours. They're going to mow it once. So there's a lot of uh, 12 persons. They're mowing, they're going to mow it at least once. We don't have a lot of details about when or uh, if it could be more than once, but. Um, just to be clear, I'm talking about an earlier mowing in June on the town roads. Which is. More stuff goes to see. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Nothing new with the railroad. Which is the line item tree brush removal mowing. Is that where. That's that where it would fit to me. Um, But we need to know a number. Um, I, the guy can't come to late fall. I wouldn't even bother. It's not worth that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, I mean, bother with it. 
or if there is time, it's a busy time, yeah. you got tired of it. An extra 32 hours. Um, let's put a note on it. Let's actually just double it for this discussion. Put a note on it and uh, come back to it because we're going to want to cut for sure. And if we have a quick place to come back to, let's have this discussion again. I'm not comfortable doubling it. Okay, well, pick a number or what number you want on it then. I'd leave it where it is until we have more information to make a reasonable decision on. Would you like more information? I I, I would, yeah. But would you like more information? No, not really. But if we find out more information about every single line, I would I'm a rid of fish budget, but too stress with me. Well, how many years ago was it that we, we were budgeting eight thousand for that line? Three or four, right? That's when that was going down. It's been longer than that, but and that yeah. was because we were going from hiring it done to doing it with our own correct crew. Yeah. So I guess my question would be: Are we doing it with our own crew, or are we hiring somebody? Given the busyness in June, I would be open to either. If you think the crew would fit it in, but I was envisioning hiring. Again, on, on decisions, right? It was the fiscal year 19. Last time we had an $8,500 budget. Yeah. And the $6,000 is just equipment. Yeah. And that was $8,500 that Mr. Kirk doing it for two weeks. And we do the same for two weeks for the six. So <clears throat> yeah, it used to be that we hired somebody to do like the over the bank stuff around bridges and guardrails and stuff like that and then the highway crew did the rest yeah so that would have covered the cost of the rental equipment yeah so that went away doing like you did that we just do it all by renting the two more we saved 2500 it seems to me if we add a motorcycle and we hire it out it's going to double the cost it would more than double the cost if we hire it out and if we rented the equipment, it would likely get pretty close to doubling the cost anyway. So if we're not going to, that's fine. But I think we. Well, it shouldn't double the cost if we're doing it with our own personnel rent. because you're paying for the labor already. Oh, it would double the 6000 If we were able to rent the equipment for a two week period twice instead of once, it would double that 6000 as well. And or if we only pick certain places, then it, if we have it for a week, then it would be 9000 for the 6000 And it's extremely hard with a rented piece of equipment to not keep somebody in it nonstop. So when you start factoring in more time, it's going to be harder than who we have right now <laughs> and doing it and everything else. So you got a recommendation, Jason? Not when it doesn't cost money. <laughs> <laughs> well, make it anyway. So let's not read this. Let's just put a note on it. If somebody feels strongly, let's bring it back up. I like the idea of adding a mowing, but I'm not convinced that if we're all not happy with raising the budget amount, just talk. Mark, do you have an opinion here, actually? I'm peaceful. No opinion, guys. Not my following. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's keep moving. All right. I'm moving on to the next section Winter Roads. Excuse me. Um, we are increasing winter sand here. Uh, winter salt, we're not decreasing this. Uh, we 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 expect that we will be using a uh, a yeah. lower volume of sand, or excuse me, a lower volume of salt. But with the increased cost, uh, it's harder to say that we'd actually save money on it. Um, so we're we're estimating it right now that it'll be a a wash. We'll have a couple more years of experience with the um, 
what do you call it? The salt brine. The salt brine. Um, and we can make better estimates in the future, but for right now, we're most comfortable estimating that it'll be the increased cost and the decreased use will come out in the wash. All right, moving on to bridges and culverts. Uh, we're increasing the amount for culverts a little bit. Um, price on culverts has gone up significantly. <clears throat> um, so again, that's another area where we're not really, it's not really reflecting an increase in use or replacement rates for culverts, it's just reflecting the increased cost in the replacements we are making now. Really, we don't pay into the reserve fund at this point, or is that somewhere else? Uh, no, this would be line three eighty six. Would be where we would put it if we were putting more money into the uh, bridge and culvert reserve fund. At this point, we feel like we just why aren't we putting money in at this point? What was not on the board last time. This was discussed. Okay. Um. The bridge and culvert reserve fund right now is pretty healthy. Um, we don't have, we have enough money to pay for the projects that we are uh, scheduling right now with Scribner Bridge. Is that a good number? Okay, I mean, okay. Why would yeah. advocate put even if it's a small amount? And I don't, that's what I was thinking. Like, I don't understand why there's nothing going into it, but I guess we're not done with our budget and everything else is going up. <laughs> so I decided not to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this has been one that we have, the board in the past hasn't been regularly contributing to. We've kind of been contributing sporadically when we have. Uh, when we're eyeing a, a future project like the when we got the money in from the historical society that all went into the bridge and culvert reserve fund but uh yeah the board hasn't traditionally been budgeting for it but we can we have our regular board meeting our next four agenda items coming up so we should wrap up culverts yep. and bridges unless we have more questions Okay. Next section, then uh, equipment. Um, no significant changes here. We'll be reviewing the capital budget, uh, the purchased large equipment capital and the capital equipment reserve fund line items. Uh, and the reserve fund line item is an identical amount as coming in as revenue. On the revenue side, uh, it's this number plus the interest on the right because the interest side. is broken out. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Um, for the outside repairs and parts, we anticipate that staying flat. Uh, we have. We've been under. We've been budgeting thirty three thousand for a few years, uh, and we've been staying in and around that number. For four thousand today. Yes. We haven't had a transmission. The prior years actually was thirty one nine thirty four. The trucks are <clears throat> all got extended warranty. Is pretty much why that holds well. I think it would be great if that ended up being a line item that we saved money on at the end of the year, but I wouldn't be comfortable okay. estimating that we'd spend less. Um, and we're seeing a little increase in uh, fuel and oils uh, due to the increasing cost of diesel. Okay. Other direct field mowing and non highway projects? I'm leaving those unchanged uh, for budgetary purposes. And the 
Uh, the mowing, I'm sorry, I'm talking about a couple of it because the mowing yep. is 200,000 for year to date. And I get that we have May and June for mowing, so we'll to mow, so we'll likely double. But I also recognize that we had a lot of trouble with our mowing company this year. And I'm surprised that we're as close to budget as it is, considering the lack of mowing that we've experienced. Uh, that is not where the Roberts and Sons mowing comes out of. What goes in? What goes in here? I don't remember. Uh, this is mowing that our highway crew does on, uh, well, on, on the recreation field. No. 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 That's uh Roberts and Sons for the different rec fields. Oh, it is Roberts and Sons, but it's mm -hmm. this line item used to be in there a long time ago because the, the town actually did the mow mm -hmm. the rec fields at one point in time. I don't but do you know what goes in that line item last time? This one here? No. Yeah. Uh, mowing, rec field mowing. Yeah, Roberts and Sons. Oh, that, for the fields. That oh, that is there. Yes. That is there. Okay. Okay, I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. I still have the same comment, but. Well, if we go out to bid again next year, it, it might cost us more to actually get the job done. Yeah, we're gonna get the job done right. Now. All right. Okay. Yeah. Have we heard from all of these people so far? Uh, all the ones that are in white, the ones highlighted in yellow, we have not heard from yet. So those numbers are placeholder numbers at this point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I've got a couple more of these process, so I might have heard of heard from one or two of them. All right. So in our in our agenda, are we going to come back to any budget related stuff, or is this our final this chance? Is it for tonight, we'll the agenda, so we'll come back to it in January. Yeah. I I have one one thing that I'd like people to at least think of. Did, did people get the um, I don't know the one the the sheet that you sent out, Brian, that has the um, surplus funds did that include the recommended pieces or is it just the spreadsheet that shows where we are i think i'd have to look at that duncan to give you a good answer on it i'm not yeah. well uh, the only reason i raise it is i want uh, just, i don't know yeah it's this it's this spreadsheet that has um and we looked at this back in i don't know september i think um, well, they have a right to know. Yeah. The packet, it's written in the packet. Yeah. Mm. The reservation. No, that's that's, that's for the, uh, probably the year. That's for the year that we're going yeah. So if you're going to pay two, it should have recommended changes. And the number is $2,005, dollars Plus, we add the number of the estimated or best estimates for the year end, which is what we're working on now. Yeah. Um, what I want people to at least think about as we go through this process is um, if you look at the budget right now, the amount to be raised by taxes represents almost 14 percent increase. We don't have the now to reduce taxes. That has well, been that's, that's what oh, that's this is. So I just right. just using some wild ass gas guesses, I plugged in 120,000 and 130,000 into the amount to reduce taxes. 120,000 reduces the amount to 7.9%. 130,000 reduces it to 7.3%. That was based on the numbers that we were working off tonight. So just think about that. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a big number. 
That's why I was making the comment that we're going to have to go back and cut things. At this point, I think I've got good numbers for all of the FY23 end of year. Um, so I'm going to work from that, and I should, at the next budget draft we have, we should have a pretty good idea about what our surplus is going to be at the end of FY23. Yeah. And if, if, we're, if those numbers are fairly accurate, it's about 8,800 8, bucks yeah. to the good. So you add that to 205,000, that's roughly the amount of money that we'll have to apply to reduce taxes and or reserve for, propose to reserve for other things. Yeah. <clears throat> so just something to think, ponder as we go through the budget process. Yep, okay. Okay. Um, and worth the orders. We have them. All right, you're not answering questions about our budget tonight? You can't, oh, we're dealing with that. Because last meeting you said you'd be here. And then they just said notify us that we were on the agenda tonight. That's right. Okay, you have the floor. We're not moving on. Is there anything that you would like to update us on for library? You're going to library, I mean, library, yeah. Um, they have all the num the new numbers I sent. They so don't have the, the new numbers that you just sent me, and you had a question about insurance. Uh, right. And that's where I'm at right now, is I need to figure out Gene's insurance. Okay. Um, so I sent new estimated year end. Okay. They have that? Maybe? I believe that at least Beth does, but I don't know if it went up to the whole board. But okay. it's well, maybe you're not I yeah. But um, I did. Say, you asked last time for us. You know, for some reason, our estimated year end on this was like just last year's budget copied over. I don't know why, but I sent you all new year end numbers for the library, and I adjusted the salary number for the library to match what the town had. Proposed right for the upcoming budget for town employees. Those were the major changes, and then I think Brian's working on uh, on the insurance insurance yeah. number. Because so does the spreadsheet that you sent out reflect the changes? That it does not. Okay, but we'll see that in the next, in the the next yes. version. Do you know what that brought the um, Proposed budget to the library budget to be paid for the taxes down to you, percentage wise. I, I don't know that yet because the insurance is going to change that. I think. Yeah, the, I'm expecting the insurance to go down a little bit more, but I, I'd like to a little bit of time with it first. You're expecting it to go down from what is currently in the revised budget unit? Yes. Okay. It was sent to all it was sent to all the select board, but it was I don't have a new version actually. So I'm not sure if I need to help this recent, but maybe it was in that uh, total budget. Did you send it to the select board? I sent it to Gotcha. Yeah. So I'll, I'll send it to you and. Yeah, I don't see it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, so insurance is still working through. And was there anything that was like you were worried we would ask questions about? Like, is there anything that stands out? Um, well, um, I, last time I was here, we had plugged in an 8.5% increase in that. Right. Right. And so I went back and adjusted it to be what the, the 6% and then the 8.4, which actually comes out to be the big number. <laughs> and, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> our original, or 7.4. 7. 7. Okay. Six and then seven point four. That's projecting for next year, not this year. That's what I'm yes. yeah. yes. 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 So that was the, that was one of the changes from 
last time I was here. Yeah. I so that number is going to change too. In right. you know the, the library budget's going to change. So it sounds like it's not time for me. It's not. Sorry. It's not. Okay, so January then. Yeah, um, we'll let you know for sure. Okay. And yes. Is, is it possible to get like a time slot versus an open ended? Because this is the second time of open ended. We'll do, yeah, we'll do it at the beginning. Yeah, sorry, it was totally a disconnect on our side. Last time we met was a special meeting and we talked about this meeting being specified for highway so we could finish the operating, getting through it once. Um, we didn't know they heard it before. So, yeah, we'll do it up front, uh, likely much like the meeting where everything else is connected. Okay, but we're not sure what meeting that is. We need to keep having budget meetings so we know that our next meeting will be budget related. Uh, so, it'll likely be the first meeting in January. And I hesitate because we have a scheduled first meeting in January agenda item a little bit later. Tonight, so that we can figure out the correct date. Okay. For that. Well, we'll um, say, yeah, we'll just. I'll have Lydia to, yeah. reach out to you, all of the um, chairs of all of the committees, just saying, you know, here's a wrap. Okay. Yes. Um, State of Art question, but obviously will be deferred until January, and that's fine because I'm. What we do is we connect by and on some things anyway. I have a question about your general government section of expenses. Okay. Uh, and uh, what I'm remembering from last summer when I made a request with LCP for to apply for a pedestrian bike grant for a smoking study for bridge over the one mm -hmm. And that was re rejected because you know it was too big of a matching grant request. At the time, uh, the board said, let's consider that expense matching fund for this upcoming 24 budget. It's not in there, of course. Uh, I just want to bring up that anecdote and request that it be considered. To my memory, it was the match was between 20 and 55,000. Or maybe 25 to 30, something like that, for the match. Again, that's a sum of money that could be part of our discussion. But I'm just bringing it to your attention. Yep. That's it. Noted. Thank you, Casey. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jeff or Jack. Do you have anything? I think mean, it's library. Your library. I'm just here to find these. I did have a question. Um, you are a co chair of uh, racial justice and social equity. Are you guys proposing getting that? Last year, you had a great budget breakdown, and you said we're shooting for this much in grants, so we're shooting for this much from taxpayers. Uh, I thought that was handy. I haven't seen it this year. Is that something you guys are going to get together and send out? Sure. Yeah. That was easy. We'll go on the next <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, renewing invoices and orders. I have a look through all of them. Do we want to go through all of them or just go through the press mark? Um, um, I didn't see anything that she. Just really quickly, passive. Uh, Mark Woodward is in here. How long is he overpaid his tax? For the tax overpayment. <laughs> that should be tapped. <clears throat> I hear all that. <laughs> tax overpayment, tax overpayment, uh, tax overpayment. Uh, Elijah Johnson, all the stuff for our farm, Donner, Johnson, Hillary Rental, Jordan Equipment, Pierce McDowell, Library, Library. We should probably have uniform. Part of the like, you know, now we're calling it out. The CAI technology is Does that mean they're still doing it? Yep, but you sent us a small bill. Yeah. Yeah, meaning we're not going to get a big, huge bill. 
No. That's good. Good news story. Yeah. Sorry, can you have any questions? Nope. Okay, next up, select board issue. Uh, sorry, review and approve minutes for December 5th and 13th. Move to approve the minutes of both the 5th and the 13th. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? And a second, not for amendment. Yep. The one we discussed earlier. Where are we going to Oh, the, the tree board. The tree board's. Yes, absolutely. Okay. You got that done, right? She's probably already done it. And no, I haven't, I haven't done it, but I, I looked at that. So you think it was just in that one thing where I was talking about the village giving the 787? That's all that was mentioned, yeah. Yeah, that's the only place I noticed yeah, it. Not the unification, it should be true board, yeah. I knew it was true board, I don't know why. Okay, uh, so we have a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, select board issues and concerns. Treasurer's report. I have one thing. Oh. It is budget related. It'll be very quick. Okay. Um, I think that it would be appropriate for us prior to developing our process for budget to come up with targets, um, the target that we want to achieve for our budget, um, and make that make that target known to you know committees and boards and stuff too. I like the idea a lot. We should add it to our October. You pick right file. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Your calendar. I like the idea a lot. So, yeah, doing it. And, Duncan, when you say target, are you talking about percent percentages or numbers? I'm talking about, yeah, ultimately percentages, Mark. Um, you know, like in, in the past, the board has said, you know, we don't want the overall budget to be more than three and a half percent or four percent or or whatever. So you know, we usually uh, take into consideration inflation and cost of living and things like that. But it, to me, it gives you uh, it gives us and the committees a target, you know, to shoot for in our budgeting, mm, especially the sheriff's department. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Okay, cool. I like the idea a lot. Treasurer's report. Uh, we're at 38.57% spent a budget. And revenues are at. And this is a period six. Yes, this is through as of today without this set of orders on. So that's pretty close. 88.2. Eight. Yep. I would like that. That's ratio. 188%. Um, the state did a true up on the ARPA money and they sent us another 300 and some odd dollars. Oh, good. Another 300. It's around 300 and some odd dollars. What happens if they. Uh, they probably sent us a bill. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. Any other, anything else, Rosemary? Yes, um, I got a liquor license from Jan Chatal. Is she on the, on Zoom? She owns what, Rosemary? It, I was just asking Beth yes. if she's on yes. Zoom. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, they have purchased she has purchased the downtown pizzeria business. Oh, congratulations. Well done. Very nice. Not the building, just the business? Just the business, as far as I know. Yeah, the building is still owned. Uh, okay. And the business name is Marcel's Salsa. Oh. I heard Mexican food. Is that yes. correct? Isn't that yeah. what she, she had? Owned a restaurant in Waterbury. 
Jason. Yes, and I went there several times. Very good. Oh, Marcel Salsa? Yeah. yeah. <gasps> I'm so happy. I'm even- Is she on Zoom? Yeah, she's on Zoom. I think she is, I, I think she is, but she must be muted. Yes, her mic's not working, it looks like. She's missing us. That's really exciting. Yeah. So she's got a first class restaurant license and a third class spirits license, which the, needs approval from the boards. Oh. Yes. Is that a motion that we should make right now? It is. Ooh. Motion. I'm, I move we approve those. I'm very excited. Yeah, let me start. Yeah, I don't care. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? You're not going to second it. <laughs> I'll second it. Good. Thanks, Duncan. Are we going to send a senior butter? We will. This is our first license regular license on that new portal. It looks different. There's no place like for the board to sign, but I go in say tomorrow morning and say it's all been approved. If you if you approve it. Yes. So when, when it comes back. To sign. So it's... Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Excellent. All those in favor, signify by saying hi. Aye. 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 Have it. Congratulations. I'm super excited. I cannot wait to you open. Personally. Me too. <laughs> I used to go there all the time. Um, so congratulations. Okay. Well, it's Rosemary. And the other thing I had is the annual holiday pay for $100 for employees. Move to approve. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think the unit there's a hard time Aye. bring it back to you. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have Jason. So, this month's report pretty much narrow road maintenance and some other little things, but uh, one of the big ones, I get such a greater for but top jet at five o'clock tonight, and he gave me a 10 day window. It should be there before then to be in uh, at, in Richmond. But the weather last week delayed it a little bit. It's coming along. Uh, and they've got the walk and roll there. So when the grader gets there, pretty much they're going to put it together and go through and test everything. And he asked me what if we needed it before they had the walk and roll on it. I didn't believe it, so there's no sense of sending it back down to have the walk and roll installed. Sounds good. So I don't think we need to bring it in. Is that what we're going? No, it's me. It said to check last week, and we got that. For 120000 Oh, that's fast. No, you're not going to do that. It's a space in the garage. Ah. Uh, flash floors. Wait, before, sorry, before we move off grade on grader. You said there's a 10 day window from when? Uh, today. Oh, 20, okay. It's the 29th. So obviously there's a holiday, but he said that it should be there by the 29th. He was very confident in that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh, so class floors. I know this has been a topic for a while. Uh, <laughs> me and Rob Moore met last week and we went to a lot of class board and we were cleaning up the the red areas and the for the MRTP compliance and there's like a eye chart and we have to reach a certain percentage every year to be in compliance. So the class boards are a really big problem for us because there's sections of class four roads. That have not been utilized for a number of years they've grown up so when there's no data available they count against us well it's when there's no data available. yeah like uh so you can't look at the road and look at uh like class boards uh, their standards uh one for a provision for but if there's no if there's no you know they can't access it and then i'm gonna get to that in a second but at the access point but 
Town Highway 12, for example, like from Quad Road to Clay Hill, doesn't exist. And not no more, but that there's two segments on there that's hydrologically connected that count against it. Well, what the town can do uh, is they can legal, uh, put it to a legalized trail, and that eliminates our obligation. And we can still turn it back into a class four in the future. Anytime. 47, another day. 47, 41, uh, Land Road off the Prospect. How's that now? Um, Reservoir Road is uh, one we looked at, and they have a gate, state has a gate up there, and we have three segments past it. That's a platform. Prospect Rock, there's 700 feet past a gate that was put there a number of years ago. The state put a gate. The, the reservoir road one needs to have me and Brian and Rob talk about it. It's not quite mapped accurately. Um, there's a gate there that keeps people from going off that, what they thought was state of But the computer shows that having three segments, I believe, that goes past the gate. And there's uh, up on uh, reservoir road and prospect rock road at the end of it, there's a gate. And there's 700 feet past the gate of Technically Town Road. There's a gate, it's been there. I talked to Steve Smith, he said it's been there 50 plus years. So we'd either have to have them take their gates down, or if we put them in the, uh, the trail, that would have. Uh, you know, well, technically, even a legal trail is not supposed to be gated. Without board permission, it shouldn't be. Right, and if you read the section of the statute pertaining to gates, it's pretty clearly related to agricultural use, and they can't be locked. And there's posted but, signs on them saying no trespassing. So that was what I the next. What would the board like do about it's done in the front of their sap line and stuff? On a section of uh, the class four section of Mine Road, that's where it's supposed to be above the road. But yeah, it's, it's actually it's Town Highway 23 off of Mine Road. It's got no trespassing, private property, and sap line running across it. I don't think it's deserved sap line. Yeah, it's deserved. I would not do that. It's a very big discussion. Yeah, it's a really big discussion. I agree. And I think that some of it actually aligns with the class four report that the why am I drunk? Planning Commission. Planning Commission gave some recommendations. Of course, the road we're talking about specifically. They yeah, did. but I don't think any of this would have reclassified any of those roads. I did think they made the that. They did yeah. the notes that I have for like town highway 12, for example. But if we don't ever use, like, if literally the road ends, and I understand that on a map it doesn't end, but if it literally ends, is there a reason we have to keep it as a town road potential future right away? Why? That's what a legal trail will do, but right? it keeps you legal right away. You still can get back up. It's correct. Required yeah. to keep it maintained. My recommendation, and it's only mine, Dr. Fine, about this. Um, Cutting all out where we've got pictures. Technically, we're obligated right now to fix that because it's one foot of greater erosion. And there's a number of class fours that we're going to be obligated to fix in their current, which is going to cost the town taxpayers a good deal of money. So by turning by turning them over to legal trails, that just it puts us in a different category and it alleviates the responsibility of having to. <clears throat> and it doesn't walk away from ever being able to turn it back into class four. It no. helps us get to the goal of being in compliance. I'm just going to our agenda list because for whatever reason, I think there's a lot of other changes that are needed. I was certificate. We, we do need to get to the class four discussion. Uh, the highway certificate. Whole. We need to do there, one. There thing. Class, we need to do one thing at a time. Three, so we, 
potentially reclassify this class to mm -hmm. there. There is a class four that I've been told is class three, but it's not on our mileage certificate. And that's it. Then there are multiple class three roads that are single resident class three roads, which are the best fit for the town. I was looking at that uh, on the their website, and all class four roads, we don't get paid anything for mileage anyway. So it's not like it's going to hinder. The cost that we or the revenue we get is actually going to save because we're not going to do the work to bring it up to the standard. Okay, noted. <coughs> we could build this out on an agenda item. Uh, we probably need to invite the planning commission too. Yeah, I think that we can target a handful of roads that were identified by the planning commission. I think the planning commission's focus was on roads that didn't have residents. Uh, and Jason's work on roads that are hydrologically connected and those places where they're both identified as hydrologically connected and they don't have residents, those should be pretty easy ones to give up. There was a section of whole agro that they discussed too. Mm -hmm. And the section of terrorist hydrologically connected. The big ones that are hydrologically connected, I count against pretty bad. The section of cotton all past, and I got the segment numbers at the job past the last president's yeah. would need substantial work. And there's other class fours that would need to be dealt with, but that's a pretty good one. Okay. Putting it for Jan for February. When do we have to be in compliance by? Well, that changes a little bit from time to time. Uh, there's another meeting that me and Robert are gonna have to go over all that, so I can have that ready for the next meeting. Um, now we're gonna be focused on the budget and all things town report for the next two meetings. Okay. So for February though, that would be off. If you know the date between now and then, like if you know when our, do you know when we're, the this is a few times, when, when are we going to be like, oh, when is this due? Um, I thought. Yeah, it's around there, but I don't have any I don't either. It's, you answered my question. You don't need to have a decision on this, but in January. That's all I was asking. Like, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I got to say it. February. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, I, from what I recall, that fine. there is a process for reclassifying roads that we have to go through. That, you, know, yeah. you don't just make the decision on the board meeting. Well, that would be a long time February. If we need another discussion, then it could be a lot better than we would do between The select board's actually supposed to go out and view the road, and you know, there's a there's a process. So, yeah, but we've got significantly longer before the MRGP, we would start to be penalized uh, for that. And, and uh, right now, we have to show progress year over year for the MRGP, which we were doing. Yes. This wasn't like a drop dead thing. This was just to try to get something new. Things. I know, you know a lot of things, a lot of stuff on everybody's plate, and it gets pushed, pushed, pushed. So, sure. Sure, you have a lot of you have anything else, Jason? <laughs> Speaking of pushing things, the you, you, the uniform, you want me to talk about that during the thing or this? Uh, we can, I think, roll from one right into the next one. Um, but yeah, what the for the uniforms? Wouldn't you go with that? All right. So the uniform company, I had two quotes from uh, Unifert and that I sent out. They have that. You you give them the quotes. I think. I don't uh, think you you don't have them. Both sign quotes and single quotes anchor. Sign both anchor. Ah, uh, whatever. Oh, no, it's not included. Uh, 
What did you have for the? I brought them to you. Do you have a copy or? I have it right here. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, are you looking for permission to go with a different uniform company? It's not okay. It's not Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, Karen. We are dissatisfied here. with our uniform company. They're not returning things on time. Uh, they're not making repairs to damaged uniforms. And uh, we have a cheaper quote to go with. It's already budgeted. It's budgeted. It's less money and better service. Yeah, I, if you need our basis for that, go for it. I, I any other thing if you can get a better quality product, I'm less highly supportive for me. Yeah. I can't speak for it. Yeah. No. We were yeah. Well about changing contracts or doing something to pay less. So it it is something that we have had to ask your permission, but if we signed a contract with somebody and we changed the contract, we would need to come back here. The contract is up for renewal. Yes. Okay. So it's it's letting one contract go and sign a new one. Yep. Okay. You have our blessing. Okay. Motion to approve both uh, signed bolts and anchors as presented. And that's for 15 of each, I believe. Yeah, the cost, as I put it, is kind of gone up to the point. And I know we set the base on the speed limit sign that Dr. Brian did. I think for the cost, we'll probably dial back a little bit. I know we talked about replacement as we go, kind of not making it like back to small meeting. Is that they're not we're technically not in compliance for the sheriff's department for the number of speed limit signs on a road. Okay. We know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what I have to say about that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> that's the nice We've talked about that, right? We did. And we were said we were going to, you know, place management. All right, we were working on the road, but for the Possible, I didn't know if that was still the plan. Or is that my sign I see. I see. Yeah, we we will be able to replace and put up fewer signs at this rate. Okay, but I kind of think in that <laughs> seems to be what the board would like to have happen. So, speaking of signs. Sign I was gonna say speaking of signs too. <laughs> you were? Yeah, well, you have to well, go ahead. Oh, well, I, I was approached by a person and Mark may want to chime in about a, a, a few meetings ago, I talked about um, signs to you know direct people to parking for the rail trail. And Mark talked about a sign for the powerhouse covered bridge. Um, and I has anything been done on, on either of those? I have left the minutes in front of me. I'm not sure, but I think it was uh, my recollection that we were going to look into this, the, the bike round place was going to look into the signs for all there, right? No, there was a motion made to purchase a sign, um, a directional sign, I believe. And Mark had also asked to have the powerhouse bridge sign included in that motion. I, th I thought that was that's my recollection. I think I think we did. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty pretty clear. I brought that up. And and the <laughs> one question that I think you asked was, did the bike shop have signs up notifying people not to park there? And Bethka received an email from. Uh, Jim. Jim saying that they actually had two signs up prominently, yeah, that's true. prominently saying that they it was reserved for you know their people only. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we should add that to the list. And what you just want sign you want? What you want? Should look at the motion. 
Let's go ahead and see if we can find a motion just to be clear a few minutes with the motion. Uh, Brian, can you speak to that? Yeah. So the powerhouse covered bridge, I think, was I think Mark mentioned that he had actually made the current sign. Is that right, Mark? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, the the original sign was stolen, and I talked to the select board, and they were non-committal, and I just went ahead and made that sign and put it up there with Howard Romero's help. I think Eric may have known that I did that, but. It, it's just a handmade sign, but it was an exact replica of what was there. Because I got a picture of what was there. Probably be what we'd want to have again. Yes. Yeah. I remember Jason specifically asking me about the details of that sign. I don't remember that detail. Okay. Well, we'll pull the minutes. Yeah. Pull the minutes, review it, and get on it. My final question is about Hilltop Drive. I saw that that was a mistake that put up on the sign and back up. That's good, but there's only one side. Full sign, I ordered and they were waiting for a new machine. They're all done. They contacted me yesterday and said they were all set. All I did uh, here is that you're on it. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Anything else today, Cindy? Okay. Okay. Thank you. For the remainder of the meeting. Except, are we sorry? Since we're talking about Jason, have we had any additional candidates? Could we repost? We don't have any additional candidates. Could we repost? Uh, I've sent it out partially, but uh, no, not thoroughly. Okay, let's post and let's put it on Facebook and pitch it on you know all the free channels. Yep. Too. Does Mount Local Road still have a? They do an online. Yep. I guess I do have some more. Uh, just the information one. Uh, third day is the last day that Jacob will be with us for a week or two. That what? That Jacob will be with us for a week or two. And then my congratulations from the whole board, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. We should have a card, actually. Jason, do you have, I mean, that's going to be a fairly significant time. Have you got anybody that you can think of that might be interested in a that. little quick job, <laughs> part-time job? I'll do it. I have time off. You got a CDL? I'm going to say, you need a CDL, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, not at the moment. Uh, it's a good thing in the school's on vacation during the first week. <laughs> yeah, and we can hope it doesn't snow. It's right? supposed to rain. So. <clears throat> well, I guess, of course. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one salt truck, so it's all good. And then the next thing was um, we have a policy about plowing snow out the road. We hand out the papers. But for the repeat people that are doing it, there's, one, there's a couple in particular, but one safety wise is down the highway. They snowball their snow out in the road on the corner. He turns it into a bottle. And Marcus got to him and we had two people call today and I complained about the corn. So can we call the sheriff's department? Yeah, I just wanted to because I think it's safety. I think safety wise, we should. Yeah. yeah. There is a minor penalty associated with it, which you've got to unfortunately you've got to go to superior court to get in for. So it's yeah, maybe the sheriff can Something. scare him into yeah. compliance. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, okay. I mean, it is a liability thing on their side. Like, they would be at fault if there was an accident, I would imagine. Yeah, it's right on the third farm way. It falls. Um, it makes it kind of nice and treated area, so it kind of makes it hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the trees over, I can say. Yeah, we should call the sheriff's department. So by all means, feel free. And um, if you get any pushback, you know, let me know. But I would imagine they'll go check it out. So they're just blowing, they're blowing the snow right out in the road. They did it all last year, and we talked to them on and off and gave them you know, paper and stuff. And then this year, they did it, and people called. Okay, well, recommendation that they can't. <clears throat>
Yeah, give it to yourself. You can let us know. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, we talked about thanks, Jason. And yeah, if you don't want to hear about anything else, then thank you very much. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Okay, committee is volunteer. No appointment to the other committee. Yep. Uh, Trent McCarver uh, is recommended. The um, other committee recommended it? Yep. All right. I'm going to go appoint Trent McCarver to the community of the committee. Thank you. Motion to appoint any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay, so I have it. The Historical Society appointment. Yep. Uh, Leslie, the Historical Society is recommending Leslie Martin for appointment. Martin to appoint Leslie Martin to the Johnson Historic Society Board of Trustees. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Me. Aye. Okay. Discuss changes to the holidays personnel policy. So you have in your Packet on packet page. That's kind of separate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Page 10. Oh, and also there's the universe. Yeah. So on packet page 10, you have the <laughs> policy. And uh, I also had a question about the motion as it was made so i've got the minutes for the, the motion um but the village has made a change to uh their personnel policy for non non-bargaining unit employees um that adds a few recognized holidays and eliminates a couple others um one right yeah. that's great In effect, yes. Um, they also talked about, well, it, it's neither here nor there. That, that, that is the, the change as it's affected. What exactly is the change? Uh, that they are eliminating town meeting day That's and right. adding Martin Luther King's birthday, Juneteenth, Indigenous Peoples Day, and the day after Thanksgiving. And also deleting Reddington Battle Day. Which we use as a filter. Yeah, so can you say that again? Benetton Battle Day. They they took it out or yeah. It? Okay. But they didn't change the CTO hours. Uh, because that was that came out of CTO hours. Yeah. Because it was a voting holiday. Yeah. Benetton Battle Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that wasn't actually a listed holiday in the policy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So people could choose to take the day after Thanksgiving. They made the two holiday holidays away. Mm -hmm. No, they kept one. They kept one holiday holiday. They kept one. Well, they made it a regular holiday, Indigenous People Day. So there are holiday holidays now. There's two in the CTO policy. In the in the current CTO policy, there's two. 11, 11 total holidays and two. Wait, 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 wait. So there's two in the current. For two floating holidays currently that represent Battle of Bennington and Columbus. I understand, but that's the purpose, purpose of it. it. And now, with their revised schedule, Bennington Battle Day goes away with it's like a floating holiday that was associated with that, but of the way. Mm -hmm. And all the same with town meeting. Or was that not a holiday? Town meeting's not a holiday. Town meeting was listed as a it was one of the recognized holidays. Mm -hmm. So they no longer have any floating holidays. Right. But they have three day days. So three days. Yeah, three holidays. I personally think it's a better benefit to have the two floating holidays and three assigned. And we can't give a town meeting day off anything. Well, and the CTO hours didn't change. We didn't get additional CTO, but, right. but they didn't. But did it, you, accounting, accounting wise, 
it's a floating holiday, okay. a floating which you had to use. Yeah. Okay. So accounting wise, she's saying we have fewer CTO days because they're now officially listed as holidays as opposed to CTO holidays. Right. Applied as a holiday. I'll, I'll trust you on this, Rosemary. Mm -hmm. uh, as it was described to me, was that they were not making changes to the number of CTO hours. Well, accrued TTO hours. Float, it's about holidays, taking hours. CTO. Yeah. yeah, the accrued CTO is still the same. But they lost two floating holidays in their combined yearly CTO. Before currently, we have to use them as CTO time. Right. So but in the CTO, as is the CTO time blanket umbrella, if you will. There was time for vacation, time for sick time, <clears throat> holidays, <throat> and some bereavement time that was in there. So did <laughs> the table is in that blanket because the no. sign come out? Okay, that was my I blanket. don't know. So the CTO in essence still does include. Still doesn't include the floating holidays. holidays. Yeah. They're just calling it something else. Another float. <laughs> but it's the convention of having it. I mean, our CTO time in the policy doesn't isn't broken out by what how it was originally built. It's just you know, I've got the example in your packet of after two years, you get 216 hours at full time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you were around when that was done. Yeah, there was a committee of town and village employees. And, and so the that CT, the, the, the concept of the floating holidays was built into the CTO time. Mm -hmm as a way to sort of combine the town and village policies together. Yeah, it is. <laughs> town and village did not have the same holidays. Right. One had Columbus Day, <laughs> independent <laughs> Metal Day, so they kind of pushed them together. Okay, so logistics. <laughs> if we kept floating holidays, let's say, okay, let's say for logistics and communication, if we need added Indigenous People Day for the holiday list for the town, and we kept two floating holidays. Logistically, that means that the town office <clears throat> is open, town, not village, is open on Juneteenth, and town is open the day after Thanksgiving. Currently, the day after Thanksgiving, we all take a CTO then. <clears throat> we use had be as Bennington Battle Day. Okay. And the, the current policy has Columbus Day, right? Mm -hmm. So they've just changed Columbus Day to uh, Indigenous uh, Peoples uh, Day. So uh, forget that. Uh, what do they add then? They add the day before Thanksgiving they the and the day before Thursday. Christmas. And Martin Luther King. The one. Martin Luther King, which that always falls on a select board day. So. I don't think that well, Indigenous Peoples Day was included before. Columbus Day. Columbus Day? As a floater. Uh, it could have been as a floater, but it, it's, I know it's one we took, we commonly took <laughs> off, but it's not one of our regular It's not a listed holiday? No. I mean, my question, so my point in asking my question about logistics is that if we how are we telling the townspeople when the, when the town office is open or not? So, you know, forget employees for a second, our customers. If we're all going to take whatever day off, we should be saying that that's a holiday. I actually, I actually, for the reason of our customer being our townspeople, I actually prefer to have a list of holidays. That being said, I think people don't expect the office to be open the day after Thanksgiving. So, I feel like that's a little more forgivable. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but otherwise, I would be open to having holidays. 
that reason. Yeah. If you have voting holidays that town will still be open, but you know, you may have a skeleton crew or whatever, but our crew is already a skeleton if we don't have village in place. It's kind, kind of the point. And then we're talking about Lydia and Brian and <clears throat> Jason's crew. Well, gotcha. Right. Well, depend on how it was interpreted because. Rosemary and Susan are not town or village employees. They're appointed officials, but they would be right. governed by the joint policy. So it would be plus for some things. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was just going to say your point about that there should be a clear list of like these are days when it's open or not. It shouldn't be like, oh, everyone took this day as a children's holiday. So it's clearly when I like it. Right. Right. Um, as a, as a town employee, I do believe we should have town meeting day off because we have yeah. to go work the polls, so there's not going to be anybody in the office. The office is basically closed. Yeah, well, the office is closed, but you're still working. Like it is right. a holiday, but the office is closed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But people used to take it as they used to take holiday pay and get paid for the time that they put in, right? I use it. To me, I take another day off instead of doing that. Yeah, some salary, but uh, some of the other people yes. that were took took the holiday plus mm -hmm. the pay, which is perfectly reasonable mm -hmm. in my opinion. If they're working, it yes. Yeah. What what occurs to me is they we no longer, as you pointed out, we no longer have a combined personnel policy. <laughs> they took unilateral action. Uh, I think you do for both and Susan. Even though they're not an employee of either entity. Right? That's a tricky one. You can disagree. I don't know. Uh, well, the thing is that do all entities have a joint policy? What are your thoughts, Phyllis Mary? It would be nice to have them all the same, but <laughs> otherwise we're down to two people in the office. <clears throat> so what does everybody think? I think that we should stick with the person of all for our employees. What does that mean? You know, I mean, changes. changes. It's currently written. Yes. Did the village consult you, Beth, about the, this change they were making? No, they didn't even have it on their agenda, the published agenda. They had an agenda change. Hmm. Therefore, it's probably not legal. Way to make it awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it was disagreeing. We're all like awkward to yeah. um, <clears throat> Well, the other part is the holiday time and pay. And this this is for non bargaining units only. Mm -hmm. Yes. Only pay is based on a maximum of an eight hour day at a regular pay rate. Thank you, Mark. Well done, reading. I, I did hear that, Beth. What are you thinking? I'm I'm stumped by um, them not is talking that, to us, is what I'm actually yeah. thinking, because it seems um, like they've gone their own direction. Um, I don't know. Yeah, isn't that in the contract? I think probably we should match that what they're doing, but I wish we, you know, every meeting I come away thinking, why are we two separate entities if we're sharing backhoes? But I think companies? that's in there for more for highway and the other workers. Can I be only that? Yeah, but it applies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the only day that would really this time we can we're just waiting for Duncan to well, I, so the, the section that they've got in here on holiday time and pay, uh, unless I'm greatly mistaken, that's already in the current policy. So I, I'm not, have, did you? What do you mean? What, what do you mean? The, this little section that they've got here, I think that's already in the current combined policy, that language. I think yes, it's already is. in there. It is. It, uh, is. It, it appears on packet page 11. So why why do they have that as part of their unanimous approval? At a guess, I would say that they wanted to just replace the whole section section rather than parting it out. You know, so that no, everything so under. Actually... You're not actually proposing to make a change to the language with regard to the time and a half. It's just the holidays mm -hmm. that they're. And, and I believe so. I don't. I did not. I did not read any change in that. Okay. But the only change is on the last paragraph. Yeah, that that was all I saw too. What was the change? The actual dates. The thing that's hard for me is that. Um, I do like the idea of having the holidays listed out, and I do think that Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday should be observed. I hear you, though, Rosemary, that that's always going to be a select board night for us, mm -hmm. um, or not. You know, maybe we could change. We talked about we work around like we work around other holidays sometimes. Like we're going to talk about a little later. Um, I think we should recognize those holidays. The um, but it's tough because because of what this does to the our community, like the disruption of having things not be aligned between our two boards and what it does to staff. For those reasons, I feel like we probably should match. But then, uh, then I want to hesitate too because, I feel like, this isn't a good, very cohesive way to be working. <laughs> we should be collaborating, not just making changes that impact each other, which makes me not want to do anything. Frankly, they want to be stubborn and <laughs> rebellious. <laughs> no, so yeah, they took they took the two polling holidays out. And they added four holidays. As a as a practical matter, you have in the past closed the office at noon on Christmas Eve day. Typically, yep. Yeah. I mean, that's um, so this gives this gives the whole Christmas Eve day off. Mm -hmm. Um I, you know, I think. You know, the board in the past is sort of Rosemary is the clerk and runs runs the office essentially. So, I mean, I think she's she's had some latitude and should have some latitude as to when the office is. If she wanted to, she could say the office is open. You know, Monday through Thursday and Friday it's not open to the public. You know, that's that's her prerogative. She could do that. So I, you know, I, I that's, that's so apropos nothing really. <laughs> it's just. Okay, we're um, gonna where were you going with that? I I guess where I'm going with it is the idea of the floating holidays. I I, I think it's nice to have Rosemary have some autonomy and latitude. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think everybody was pretty happy with having you know getting done at noon on Christmas Eve day. Yeah, which is kind of the tradition. All right, right now, there are 11 paid holidays, and apparently some half days that are paid. I think that's very generous. I, don't I think know. this is in more in line with the union contract with the village. Well, the town doesn't need to let the no. union's contract 
No, it doesn't. I'm just saying that's probably why they did it. Maybe. As far as you know, these are the days that they get. Yeah, because I know they got they got more Martin Luther King Day, and they got. Well, yeah, I've always thought that. we should have yeah, been a place should have Martin Luther King Day. Um, I think. I need an answer from Mark and not uh, him. Or somebody's got to make a motion or put a motion. So, what are our choices? I mean, we don't, since they took the attitude that they took, we don't necessarily have to do exactly what they did. We don't have to. Us not doing that, what they did, means that our personnel policy as it is right now is in place. There's a lot. There's a lot of reference to the personnel policy in our plan. Right. It puts us, okay, so language of executive session, it puts us at a disadvantage in bargaining uh, if we change things right now, in theory. Right now, our current contract is um, with references completely our personnel policy and those contracted, those uh, union employees would still fall under that version at the time in which they signed their contract last year, right now. Um, but we still have uh, negotiations happening. We're, we probably can't say. We can't talk about <laughs> that. Yeah. We could also put this in perspective. I mean, very commonly in private sector between seven and nine days in a lot of the industries, there are some that are much more generous, but the you know, town's already at 11. Personnel policy, we're already two above. Pretty standard what anybody would get if they went from the private sector from here. Would so we want to go forward about that? I never really like comparing to the private sector. I'm more happy comparing to other municipal entities. Um, but private sector is another valuable word. It is. Yeah. Okay, so what are we doing? Anything? I don't support any changes. Mark? I, agree with us. I <laughs> I'm perplexed. I, I say, you know. I thought we should match it in it's just my um being irked by the way they did it that creates a some hesitancy on my part. You know, it's just too bad that so I'll go with you know, I'm very amicable either way. Either we stay with what we have, it sounds like that may be the best thing to do considering that we're in contract negotiations right now maybe we just stay put where we are that's my feeling yeah okay we have consensus so i think we're not going to do anything uh, let's see how contract negotiations go and maybe we'll readdress it rosemary i know it puts you in a suit in a kind of a weird place but well these don't take place until january 1st so at least the upcoming holidays, you can do as you don't have to do yeah. yeah, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday will be the first difference that comes up. So, yeah, you could vote to just add that one. But as I've said, I, I've always thought that you know it's come up many years in a row whether or not they should have. My Luther King holiday. And I think most, you know, a lot of, like most municipal entities certainly have, certainly. my private sector, but most municipal entities have Martin Luther King Day off. And as a select board member, I'm certainly happy to meet on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. We need to. I am too, if it means that the staff wants to take, use CTO time to take Martin Luther King Jr. day off, I would strongly encourage it. I don't want to add it right now just because I think that takes a option. Yeah. So it's 
it's a little bit like making a decision on a vacuum, not knowing, um, and I don't want to go into the session to discuss it. So let's stay where we are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And if anybody wants to, they can uh, take their seat. Yeah. So Rosemary, I know it's complicated. If you want to talk through anything, happy to. If y'all can use it. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. We don't have the actual contracts yet, okay, but uh, I'm, I just wanted to reference the percent. Yeah, I don't think you're welcome to, but I don't think you need to pull it. Um, but we do have a verbal commitment uh, from the village that it will be a 3% increase. And uh, the village is also taking, technically they're taking a 2.9% increase but everybody else is getting three percent is that reflected in the budget it is and did you get that from from air from air okay. okay and you saw that we're going to start getting monthly reports that will forward onto the board from the fire department yep yeah that's cool do you have the contract we don't have the uh, an actual contract from from them yet why don't we do that? I hope that we'll have it after their next meeting. April. Okay. Next. Next up, uh, evaluation of select board priorities. Right now, it's very interesting, but I appreciate this being here. Thank you for adding that. Oh. Let's see. I mean, it's our budget. Well, yeah. Could it avoid people just grabbing the plate? Might help with the budget. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all the leave also for three select board members and we're facing the taxes. Jeff, what you asked for. Okay. It's not that he overpaid him, it's that he got his state payment um, finally after he filed his taxes in October. What if I were by one? I'd swear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Light Industrial Park, ATV Ordinance and Economic Development and Branding. Oh, why uh, are Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I, I hadn't planned for a whole exercise about us, you know, Reevaluating these at this meeting, you know, we'll get into something like that uh, after budget season, after town meeting day. Yep. Um, but is there anything else that you want to discuss with these? Like, you know, is it a good time to think about how the budget reflects your priorities and values? Well, speaking of, actually. Duncan, this is the thing that we forgot. Um, the economic development of $40,000. Oh, yeah. Isn't in our budget right now. And economic development is in the top three, and it's very much on the free rate line. And it's going to be easy to argue that late industrial park falls into that category, too. So, what do we want to do about that in our budget? Do we want to? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know where we stand after we have cash on the end discussion and come up with a little bit of the to the voters. Okay. As this, we're already looking higher than inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. I'm I'm thinking that we need it somewhere, um, and I you know I think we could, we could do that in one of three different ways. We could put it in the budget. We could propose to reserve a certain amount of money out of the surplus for that purpose, or we could go in a separate article. I'm not wed to any one of those particularly over the other. I think all things considered, you could certainly make the argument that we asked the voters for it and therefore it could, it could logically be in the budget. But if we had another 40,000 in the budget, it's 
If we did that, I would advocate for applying more of the surplus to reduce taxes. So it's you know it's almost half a dozen or one sixth of the other. Mm. Interestingly enough, about articles, Don Waterbury bolts on every one. Yep, a, a lot of towns do vote individually. Everyone. Yeah, and we vote thirty-three thousand dollars just as part of a not even as a separate. Oh, you mean for the uh, for the. Um... Appropriate. 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 Yeah, a lot, lot of towns still. I think still. that should at least be presented as a block. We did last year. Appropriations. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Did we? I'm sure we did because we argued about it. Oh, um, we did. I was argued whether it should be all for it. Yeah. Well, the argument is we that did. anybody could make a motion to. Yeah. Part of the issue is that Dave Williams has always taken the position that the voters can reduce the budget, but they can't, can't say it. what line item it has to come out from. I'm not, I've never been convinced that he's right on that, but it's the way he, nobody's challenged him and he has the right to do that as the moderator until somebody challenges him and then, um, you know, he's, he's shown them to be wrong. Um, but someone certainly could make a motion to reduce the budget by $3,500 and recommend that the board, you know, eliminate um, the funding of the home health agency or whatever. Yeah. That becomes awkward. I think. I think it becomes awkward for the person making the motion because at the end of the day, the select board, uh, it's a non-binding. It's a non the, the budget gets reduced by $3,500, but the select board gets to choose where they take the $3,500 out of. They don't have to say, we're going to take it out of that line. Either. Yeah, I mean, we can argue that. I don't know if I want to. It's a different question. I get that it's non-binding, but it's a different question. Which is... If you, open, if you open it up like that, couldn't somebody from the floor say, um, I want to reduce the sheriff's contract by... Fifty thousand bucks. They could. They could. Doesn't mean we would do it. But if it well, if if we go line item like Eben is talking about, um, you know the, I, I don't know what they're called. The other, you know, the home health and all that. Might as well do it for the sheriff's department and other things. Well, you're all quiet now, or my computer. <laughs> I thought it gave freedom to the voters a little bit. Oh. Looks like I'll be on my own island. So no, I want to be sure. No, I don't care if you're yeah, on the I agree with you. But I guess I think we don't need that right tonight. Yeah. yeah. So back to our priority list. I'm I'm gonna advocate that we I mean, do we need to do we need to do anything with this? And you don't need to do anything with it. You don't have to make any changes. This is on the our file as something to review a couple <laughs> times a year. So I'm bringing it before you to have an opportunity to review it. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I am I am really interested in what other towns are doing with the ARPA money. I want that to stay high on our list of concerns. With, with, the, ARPA with, what? ARPA with the with the ARPA money, we need to be focused on that. I know you're talking about it, but I was just talking to people about what Crassbury and Westford. There's some towns that are doing some very creative, thoughtful things, and that that needs to be heavy on our agenda this coming year, as you would agree, Duncan. That's got to be real soon, Mark. I know. I think we're going to need a working committee for that, for ARPA ideas and driving things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of this list, I, I would, you know, I think I've advocated this in the past. <clears throat> We've got the clerk treasurer plan down here toward the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I think personally that should migrate up towards the top. And we, you know, we should have start having discussions with Rosemary about. The bill, make that transition. The bill and, the, and the voters. The articles and they come in. They're going to put it in theirs? Yes. To have a separate 
Because I mean, that's to have time. it appointed. Oh, to have it appointed. Mm -hmm. Boy, did you say, Mark? <clears throat> um, it certainly seems like a discussion that the whole community needs to be aware of promptly. You know, certainly by it town meeting, it needs to be brought up. Which, which item are we talking about? About the change in Rosemary's um, a position. Okay. Being, being appointed. Well, one, one thing that's a little bit weird is your your um term is not up this year it's up yes. next year right no it's coming next oh year. it is up this coming year yeah 23 but your plan was to run for another another two year mm -hmm. do we need an act in the legislature to change that duncan no or rosemary no you need voter approval okay need, so it is it is like a, yeah it isn't a charter change or something not a charter no, change. We don't have a we, yeah, we don't have a it's authorized by statute. Yeah. But it would almost be more confusing this year because they would be voting for the town clerk and then voting to. In 45 days, it's. There's, there is a provision on the, there's a provision on the statute. Days, yeah. yeah. Well, if we're fortunate, there won't we'll be. be Competitive point you the this year or would we appoint you next year if 45 the, days after you let, after it's approved if they take okay. the vote it's actually there's a 45 day clock on it so if they vote to approve then the, the select board has to come up with a plan within 45 days right mm -hmm. i think it's something like that. somebody could get a petition to rescind Res yeah true yeah. that's why there's 45 days yeah you're probably right yeah is that would run the clock, but I, I think it's important that you know I, I don't I don't I don't know that we need to do it this year. It might make some sense to do it if the, if the village is going to at the same time, and but I think we could you know we could make an arrangement with the voters in Rosemary that if that was on the agenda that Rosemary would have the knowledge that we would appoint her for a two year term. Which is which was what you were planning on. Does it right? have is there term limits on it when you do appointments? That was the question I had too. Or do you appoint annually? Like how does that work? A whole bunch of things get appointed mm -hmm. annually. Mm -hmm. Should we find that There is a guide written <clears throat> for making the transition from elected to appointed. Would you like me to send that to the board? Yes, please. I would assume it would be at, sure employment of, at the will of the select board. Yeah, that would be my sense, Rosemary, too. If they wanted the person done, they'd be done. I suppose, but I don't, I, I'm not convinced that we. Okay, we did some know. research. We should just put a pin in that with some research, but yeah, we can answer some questions. Okay, I yeah. agree with I agree with bumping the clerk treasurer plan to the top. Does everyone else agree? Well, I don't know if it needs to be at the top, but it certainly needs to be up there, you know, for an active discussion. We're going to get it in on the uh, ballot and it's at the top because we need to do it in January. January. Yeah, if we're if we're actually going to do it for the coming year, I'd really like to hear more from Rosemary about you know how she thinks the mechanics of that ought to work. Bump at the top. We can bump it down later. Decide not to do this year. That's totally fine. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Mark? Are you hearing me cough? Yeah. Oh, is that what you're doing? So, <laughs> Rosemary, <laughs> would you be comfortable, um, you know, coming up with sort of some? Guidance to the board as to, what, as to what you think might be the best way to make that transition. Sure. Okay. What are you good with that? Sounds good. good to me. Sounds good to me, but if we're going to do it this year, then we need to move quickly. And the treasurer is already appointed? No. No. Oh, so the treasurer is the other thing we talked about. Yeah, it would have to be both. It's two separate positions. Yeah, she's actually elected as clerk and treasurer. Yeah, so we can do a pineball. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can put both in the ballot. Okay. 
Seems okay. like something that we ought to coordinate with the village. Who? Yeah. <laughs> well, the town was three year terms, and with the village, it's every year. It's every so. year. And Rosemary was saying that they're planning on putting it on their April ballot. In the village is actually, well, I mean, one one thought was that they were contemplating that there might be a separate village treasurer and a separate town treasurer. Was that, could I get that right? Or? Possible. I, that discussion came up at a joint meeting. I don't know how far they carried that on. Maybe it was you that was thinking that it might be reasonable to have a separate. Was, was it you? Yeah, was I don't thinking of? think it would be a full time position for either one. It certainly wouldn't on the town side. No. Be more on the village side because with the input as well, it's so many more. Okay, so are we all set with priorities? <laughs> yeah. Okay, scheduling so first meeting in January. So first meeting in January falls on January 2nd, which is the observed day for New Year's. Well, because that's the Monday following. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's the thought? Do it Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, the this room and the Zoom is free. Uh, it's going to be both days. <laughs> <laughs> we might need it. I, I would move to change the regular meeting uh, from the second to the third. Same time, same bat channel. I can't be there. You can't be? Well, maybe I'll rescind my motion. Yeah, let me just, so, okay, there's a couple of options. So we can make it harder. It's pretty gross, so this is fair warning. Um, one option is could, like Wednesday. I could make work. I prefer not to, but I could. Um, and on Thursday, I could also make work. Or the following Monday, the ninth, I could definitely use wide open. It is open. The trustee meets on Monday. Monday. Okay. Yep. So the, uh, the other option is that you could meet without me on a day that I really can't. Um, Tuesday, um, but we need to make sure we have a quorum. So, and you know, when it comes to budget, I really would rather have everybody if possible. Okay. Um, so, Wednesday or Thursday, anytime after six, I could do. Thursday, we'd run into conflict with the I think that's the racial justice committee is meeting that Thursday, but the, there is somebody meeting that Thursday. Yes, yeah, racial justice. No. No, either they could meet out back or we could, one yeah. or the other. What works better for you, Beth? I would prefer Thursday over Wednesday if possible. Everyone, you're welcome Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday, January 5th. I like it. Is that good for you, Mark? Yep, I'll make it work. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Are we actually doing that as a motion? I have to make a motion. No, I we don't. need to be a very specific yeah. schedule. We need to. Um, so we got to meet at 6 or 6.30, you're thinking? I kind of like six for the budget. I feel like my brain functions a little bit better if we talk budget earlier. You want to do it the same way of just start with the budget and then roll into the rest of the meeting? Yeah, and the rest of the meeting needs to be like really short. Like, yeah. yeah. Like maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got that one scheduled right now, pretty light, although I am trying to schedule for the legislators to visit. And that's really the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, distantly related that's to budget, good, but. Good 45 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like the This year, hour and a half. Oh. 
Just and don't yeah. ask him any questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so six o'clock on the fifth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, advancing the light industrial park. So we had let the left this in kind of a a, a little bit of limbo about um, what we wanted to do for next steps, whether. Uh, we were interested in, well, I, I don't think we were interested in proceeding with the new engineering study uh, that we had an estimate for that. Um, there was some discussion about getting estimates for construction based on the old engineering study. Um, or I don't think it makes a lot of sense, but So we're ending early. We have to end early now. <laughs> <laughs> Engineers, so yeah, we want to put a little money on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Right now, it's a topic of discussion with planning commission. Um. I haven't been able to attend their meetings. They've been. I think I was sick for one, and they were conflicting. But uh, I, I do intend to meet with them and. Kind of hear their input. That's great. Um, I think we need to, especially with the survey that they're doing right now. When are they going to have that together? Uh, that's the primary purpose of their next meeting. It is processing the survey inputs. Are those public? It's just wrong. They can send out. Not, I think it has to be public, yeah. That would be pretty helpful. Yeah. Just send out all the raw data, maybe. Yeah, that would be good, yeah. Okay. The interesting is how it compares from our survey that we got results from. Probably not more. Probably better. They did really well in the race, too, which is good. So if yeah. the purpose of this is to talk about next steps, I, I dug out an email that Brian sent to everybody back in October from Pat Ripley. Um, and that email basically said that LEDC was, uh, you guys walked the property. He was recommending essentially that we continue with an engineer or updating the engineering study. Um, nobody knew what the cost was at that point. He goes on to say LEDC is going to continue to maintain our our park this is brian saying as part of their priorities and planning um he's also been hearing from people that they're looking for twenty thousand square foot buildings uh and that nobody's willing to do that on spec they pretty much want to build a bill right so i'm you know i know thirty five thousand dollars sounds like a lot of money i'm going to just say I agree, it's a lot of money. Um, we do have some ARPA funds. Um, I also think that it's going to be really hard to find a qualified engineering firm to do the necessary work for the permitting. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm not sure that the, I think the 35,000 is probably a reflection of the fact that Mumley Associates knows that they've got, um, you know, the raw data already pretty much in, in, uh, ready to go. And if we don't take it, they've got plenty of other work. Um, so if we really want to do something with that, I just, I go back to the fact that I just don't see how we can move a project forward without having an updated study. I'm fully committed to it. I understand that other people aren't. Um, but I'm, I guess I'm suggesting that maybe the 35,000 would be a good use of some ARPA funds, especially if it could get us to leverage a bunch of other ARPA money to build the park. 
leverage the park. And I'm not comfortable with that, with the planning commission looking at it for housing. Um, I'll tell you right now, if it comes back to us as a housing project, that's not what the voters voted on. The voters voted on specifically buying that piece of property with the, with the select board saying it's gonna be used for commercial light industrial. So if we're gonna turn it into something else, I personally am gonna strongly advocate that we go back to the voters and say, has it worked out? You wanna sell it? You wanna, you know, what do we do with it? You want to turn it into housing? What do you want to do? But I, I for one, will not vote to spend a nickel on that property for housing. That's, well, that's just me. Unless it comes back from the voters. Unless it comes back from the voters. And by that time, I won't be on the board, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we were to do a survey, I assume that there's grants out there to help supplement the cost of. I'm sorry, uh, uh, I did the engineering report. I assume there's grants out there to something about the cost or something like that. Multiple planning grants. Um, and I would assume there, that L LCPC could help us out with that. I think that engaging with LCPC on that is a, a good idea. And there might be, because there's a lot of money flowing through for economic development related to ARPA, there might be more money available than there would have been another time. I think we should ask. Hmm. We've, so if we can get an engineering study for 10 or 15,000. Very good, good, good. I don't mean, no, I don't mean it costs that much. I mean that we only have to match half of what the cost is. That would be wonderful. You don't believe it. We just got to start paying for dollars. <laughs> no, that's, that's one percent of the cost of the study. All right. <laughs> right. And if we were to decide to spend our money on that survey, all we would need to do is motion that be used from that account. Uh, if we if we hired Mumley to do the to do the yeah. additional work, I that's we'd have to problem. follow our procurement yeah. policy, but yeah, so it would actually be going up to bid and everything else, but it would be. Uh, I don't believe there are any anything else that we need to do to spend the money. We would just be reporting that we have spent the money, right. and that would be. That would be committing it by 2024 and spending it by 2026. It would be that much yep. that we would have actually committed and spent. Um, so do you want to circulate an RFP for engineering design? Because that would be part of the process anyways. And we could always reject all bids. <sighs> we could, I guess. Why would we do that right now? Look. We, if we're going out for a grant, we shouldn't circulate an RFP before we go out for the grant because there could be specific requirements of the grant that we might not include in an RFP if we're writing it. But that's if we're going for it. So by next meeting, yeah. will you know what the temperature is of, of a grant for an engineering study? Revised engineering study. I can at least speak with uh, LCPC and see if they're if they're aware of anything specific uh, that's worth applying for for an engineering study. I'm if I'm not, not aware of anything. If they're not. Let's have a more serious discussion next meeting. Yeah, well, I agree. Well, some meeting. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Yeah, we, we got it. We got us. We got to make a plan soon. Yeah. 2024 is right around the corner, people. A bunch of crap, yeah. I keep saying it, but <laughs> well, I know it, but there's things we have to do. How much how much is this property worth? I think we should just sell it. Is it worth, is it worth half a million dollars now? No We're idea. No. no idea. If you want to sell it, you better come up with an article real quick. 
Do we not have a line for the economic development from the article from last year for the school year 23? Do we not add it to the budget? Why is it in the budget? It's it, it, it was it's not a line raised by taxes. Included in the raised by taxes, but it's not pulled out at all anywhere else. Uh, it's that you're expensing it out. I did expense it. I added that, and I have to look. Con select board contracted services. I think. I think that's where it went. That ended up being fifty-two thousand. So we had we had budgeted twelve, added to forty, okay. so it ended up plus okay. fifty-two. Okay. Although that's not where it is. Huh? Uh, it's a consultant. It's consultant, it's not contract. Yeah. That's all. Okay, um, we're at the end of our agenda. We'll do one more, right? Go into executive session. You want to make the motion? This is the two parter. Uh, I motion that we make our public disclosure of proposed economic development services may place the board at disadvantage. Do we motion? Do a second? Apparently not. Second. I, I was thinking earlier about it. All that's in favor? Contract. But Aye. 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 That being the case, I'm watching that. Enter into executive session as allowed by 1 BSA 313A1. Good second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you in favor, Duncan? I thought I said no. I didn't uh, I, did, I meant to. If I didn't, I meant to. I intended to. Okay. Okay. I have it. Uh, Donna, we won't have any action. I'll just send you the time. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. And yeah. a happy New Year. Don't be Yeah, we won't. Ready? Okay. You mm -hmm. want to go to the bar with you? It's not a barbecue. It is. Oh, it's kind of hard. Is it really a winter? Why not? You weren't invited. I'm invited myself. I didn't bring winter, winter food. Mm. This, we don't have it. What? This week? This week, so I have to tell you. <laughs>